So I used to be an international urban planner. And while I was there, I looked at the lives of people there. Common people, I will not say Amadmi. I am no longer with Amadmi. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that they live a life of dignity. And I felt, can I bring that into India? I came back, I worked with the Nazare, drafting the right to information, many laws. And then it, with Kejriwal, we started the India, India Against Corruption Movement, which morphed into a political party. And looking at the way it was going, I quit politics completely in 2015. Osho used to say that there is richness in life and there is poverty. And having been in politics for some time, I realized that was extreme poverty. So I thought I cannot live a life in which every morning you are struggling, you have a life which is transactional only. So, no so anyway, having said that, but I used to wonder that how a few centuries back <coughs> we were called the Sonegi Chidiya and we had 33% of the global economy and 30% of the trade. Uh, and uh, because having been a, a religious, spiritual person, I realized unless India becomes successful, this knowledge system will get lost as it is getting lost now. And to make India successful, one has to do something. And that's how I started interacting with uh, and trying to have. So I used to say Duryodhan and Bhim fought for very long time till Krishna showed which is the spot to hit. So how does one find that spot which will transform India again back to what it should be? And I took the right to information, then working with Anna Azare, working, starting a political party. All of those were attempts to find that spot, to find that lever which could quickly overturn the entire proceeding or the way it was going with the injustices, with the caste system, with the inequality. So how does one attempt to transform that? And which are the points which can make that happen? But having go on and started a political system, started a journey. I felt that it was time that I went to the grass. I went to a village in my life and only uh, was in Lagan movie. Only in the movie. And uh, so I am just giving a story of my life just to come back to that impact. Because the idea was how do you have a huge impact? People come to me and say, what can we do? There are very few people who want to do something. I plastic bottle, I use brush, I use Do something which has because the size of the problem is so large that unless the size of your solution is larger enough, how will you overtake that? So I started going in the villages, started working on the 360 degrees development, education, healthcare, uh, income, water, all of those things. But at one point of time I started realizing that if I do that, then the impact will be maybe on 25 villages or 50 villages and India is 640,000 villages. How does one have impact across it? Because I'm a nation, I want to build the nation. I am not a social worker. So then we changed track and said, can we get a formula to increase the income of the farmers? Because to my mind, and this is something which may not be liked by many of you, is I think education and healthcare is overrated. If you increase the income of the farmer multifold, then they have the capacity to look after education, to look after healthcare, to look after many, many other elements of this. Country. So I went to the worst area in the country and having been in a moment, I quickly realized that if transformation is to take place, then it will take place through movements, not through a campaign or a mission or a project. Because all of those are inner, my project, my campaign, my movement is national. Whether it's the Gandhi movement or the movement against the emergency where I had gone underground or the Mandir Mandal or the latest Anna movement. 
Movements have a capacity to take a person out of his head on his But most movements till now had taken place of Murdabad. Wanting to break a building without having the blueprint or the heavy new one. Which is why movements have succeeded but country has not transformed to that extent. So I thought, can we make a positive movement? Can we make a non-confrontational, pro-development movement? And I started working in the villages. And then I quickly decided, let's try to increase the income of farmers. And I chose the worst area in the country in a very conscious manner. So, Marathwada, highest farmer society, weed was district in Marathwada. And then there was Asti and Parli. And Parli had lawlessness, guns, or swords. So I said, let's go with Parli. If I can transform Parli, I can transform it. Yeah. So, I'm trying to create a formula, okay, which is then able to scale it up across the nation. So, so, in the last four years, we are working on increasing farmer incomes. I think 20,000 families have increased their incomes 8 to 10 fold by changing the cropping pattern, etc, etc. And uh, we are now working from 15 villages to 2,600 villages across 23 districts in India. Plus, we are working in touch of water management. So, why I have got a proof of concept, there is this restlessness. That I have a model. Now, how do we do it in the country? So, that's where I am at this point of time. How do you create an impact that is nationwide? And how do you create that impact not by thought leadership? I am sure that I am not running it down. But I am just saying that is not my cup of tea. We need to reach what they say, Gyan Marg bhi hai, Murti Marg bhi hai, Karma Marg hai. So, how do I create an impact which can change this country? You know, this has been one of the greatest countries in the world. How do I bring that back? So, if I do a small job, I think that I am capable of doing this. This guy has the capability of doing so much more. He can kill the share, he is fighting with the chew. So, I think that how do I impact this? So, that's what I think. So, 